Today's game development experiment is a recreation of the award-winning puzzle game Babber is You. This innovative puzzle is so special because you can manipulate the rules of the game while you play it, changing how the game works entirely, causing some very surprising and unique interactions. This was also one of the most satisfying puzzle games the world has ever seen, and if you're anything like me, while playing this game, the only thing you could think of is how can we remake it too? The steps involved are to recreate the world itself with a moving player and other obstacles, adding the rules which determine how they will interact, and then allowing the player to change who they are with the is blocks while the game is running. But my calculations, level 1 is 33 blocks wide and 18 blocks tall, with each block being 24 by 24 pixels big. If we draw these tiles, center them, and change the colors a bit, you'll see it looks very familiar. It doesn't take much more time to draw not Baba to the screen. They don't look quite right though, so to make this the best recreation possible, I found the actual Baba assets from the real game and made them move around. You can hardly tell the difference. Now let's move over to the part we've all been waiting for. How does this game's unique puzzle mechanic really work? From the Babbage U wiki, we have four distinct categories of objects to add. Nouns, operators, properties, and collectibles. For this video, I'm going to keep it simple and stick to only what's in the first level. Nouns we have already added, they are anything that have the capability to be you. Baba, rocks, flags, etc. Of special note is that they also have the ability to become any other noun. We need their associated text form too, so we can use them to form the rules. Before we move them around to form the rules visually, we need to add the rule functionality in code. Currently, we move Baba directly, but in Baba is you, you only move Baba if Baba is you. You can just as easily move walls or flags or rocks if they are you too. Inspired by this menu in the game, let's add a rule dictionary and default the U value to Baba. Now when we go to move, instead of moving Baba, we move this abstracted U according to that new rule. It's now completely trivial to make you a wall and move that instead. The next most important rule is stop. When we move, we now get the noun which is currently stop too, and if a stop is in the position we want to move to, we just stay where we are. Unfortunately for us, pushing is a lot more complicated. And here's why. Take this level. When we move right, we want to move to where the rock is, and then move the rock over one to push it out the way as well. Okay, that makes sense, but what about now? As far as Babra is concerned, it can push the rock out of the way, so it's moved to where the rock is, but the rock is stuck because the wall is stopping it from getting out of the way, so Babra shouldn't have actually moved there in the first place. What I think we really need to do before we move Babra is to check for a rock, and then call move again on this rock in the same direction to see if we can move that too. If the rock moves, we know Babra can move, and if it doesn't, we don't. This works really well when the U noun is just one thing, Baba here pushing stuff around for example, but as soon as we become the walls, we immediately have another problem. Well played Arvi Taikari, you've scuppered us again! The issue is that if we move to the right with all these walls, if this one moves first, all the rest can follow one by one, but if this one goes first, well we can't. My intuition is that if we always move the ones most on the right when moving right first, the highest when moving up, etc, this will fix the issue. We do this by sorting all the instances of U before before we try moving them according to the direction we're trying to move in. I think that got it! We did find a new bug though with multiple instances of you where we're not checking for collisions with another copy of ourselves when we move. Oops. All fixed now and pushing is complete. Other than a literally unwritten rule we didn't realise at all. See, up until now every rule can only be one thing. Baba is you or wall is you, but never Baba and wall are you at the same time. Not yet anyway. Pushing is different though because the rules say rock is push. But you can also push the rules themselves around too. Let's modify the rule nouns to have multiple nouns each. For testing, let's have push be rock and flags. Okay, winning is the last rule we need to take a look at for how the dynamic rule changing works. We will get to that in just a second, but I want to take a quick detour to show you how to remake the amazing genius of Babra's U's unique animations. The sprite sheet for Babra's U looks like this. In other games, we would have this top row and a timer ticking at a steady FPS to move to the right for the next frame, be that for moving to the right, up, left or down. Babra is unique though because it also has two other rows of variant sprites. It's not just Babra, in fact, all nouns have an animated appearance, that is, all nouns have three variants for each sprite which they change to every 150 milliseconds. We can add these variant sprites by adding a new variable I'm calling sprite variant. Zero here represents the top row, one is the middle row, and two is the bottom. Right now we're always cropping the image at 1 1, but we actually want to cycle between 1 1, 126, and 151. Luckily for us, this can all be rewritten as this. After throwing in our new variable we said would represent 0, 1, and 2, we have our equation. This does nothing yet because the sprite variant is always zero, but in your game engine of choice there will be a way to set a timer for every 150 milliseconds and increase it to the next value mod 3 so it wraps back around. I already feel like we know a lot more than we did when we started about Babra's U, and the great thing is is that the best bit is still to come. Back to the win rule, after we've tried to move, if we did move, we can add a new check for if we ended up on a winning noun. And because I'm not an amazing artist like the original, we can just end the game to see if it works. 
And it does. This is all the rules and mechanics we need to recreate Babra as you. But the real fun comes from being able to change them dynamically while you are playing instead of just in the code. So with all the rules and text box added, how do we make them manipulate the rules? Earlier on I hard coded in some rules, so let's delete those for now, but remember what they look like for later. When the game starts, all the blocks are loaded in without any rules, so we can't do anything at all. So the first thing we need to do right away is add them back in. We look through every is block and first of all try to find a noun word either on its right or above it. The noun this represents can then become one of two things. It can either become another noun with all the rules for example becoming flags, or it can gain a property such as push like this rock. To add the property rules like win, push, you, etc, we simply get whatever the name of the rule is in the suffix block and add the noun which is the prefix block to the dictionary of rules we had before. For turning one noun into another, we get all the instances of the prefix noun, and then we add all of those instances to the other noun in the suffix. Running this on level 1 when the game loads gets us back to the default rules we had before, and updating the rules after every time we've moved allows us to push those blocks around and change them. One of the reasons I, and I'm sure you love Babra's You so much, is that it's just so damn unique, and it's an amazing case study of a Steam indie game made with so little but achieving so much. I think this is mostly down to its amazing hook, and if you are looking to come up with new and innovative hooks like Babra's You yourself, then check out this video covering all the secrets of game dev I wish I knew sooner, including my favourite way to come up with new wacky ideas in a short amount of time. Happy coding everyone!